the glory father the Lord, holy spirit now jesus we give you all the glory how oh, take your glory lord take your glory for illumination this morning. He asks for light, for encounters. He asks for the flow, the move of your spirit, of your power, the move of your glory, the activation of different giftings of the spirit, the manifestations of the giftings of the spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus, take us into your word and let the power in your word be released. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we bless you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. May be seated. Welcome, someone. Kalala Shele Mantis. We give thanks to Jesus. We will go through the scriptures to learn something from the Lord. I believe that there's so much that the Lord wants us to know. And we cannot learn everything in one day. Not even in a month. And we cannot touch everything in one day. Not even in one year. That is why when you go to maybe secondary schools or the schooling system, you touch something today, you touch something tomorrow. So the fact that we are studying logarithm does not mean that we don't know about arithmetic. Or it doesn't mean we will not learn plain geometry. We will learn it. And it's one step at a time. It doesn't mean that we will not learn sets. I think usually we begin with sets. That is from JHS and then teachers. We begin with sets. If you want to come to the university, you do something around it. So you start from somewhere and then they take you through. It is called a syllabus. It is the same with the Spirit of God. God wouldn't teach you everything at the same time. But there are things that you can't receive until you have received other things. There's a knowledge that you cannot imbibe, you cannot understand until you have already received another knowledge. Until you have had certain encounters. There are things we can say and you will not get it. Or somebody else can say. Sometimes when I listen to certain men of God, Maybe you have not encountered something to understand what this guy is saying. Yes. So, I fast forward those ones. Like, they think about pre-Adamic creation. And some men of God, like Apostle Ramey, Apostle Oropo, and even Apostle Josh, they are very certain about it when they teach it. I don't have information enough to go for it or be against it. So, I don't mention it. I am neutral. I've gone through the scripture, tried to find Maybe God has not opened me up to it yet. But I've not found enough information for it or against it. So I'll leave it. When they say it, I say, see, but I didn't hear. I heard it, but I can't teach it. Because I am not sure of it yet. It doesn't mean maybe I am ignorant. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. So, sometimes you fast forward certain things. You leave them. And then you focus on what you can receive. And the Lord is going to be a blessing to you this morning. I want us to look at engaging the word. Engaging the word. Engaging the word. God takes us through one level of knowledge to another. One level of encounter to another. That is the way he establishes people. If you become somebody who teaches, maybe probably haphazardly, the people who engage things to their destruction. When somebody becomes born again, one of the things is to teach the person the fear of God. There are certain things that you have to implant in the spirit or in the soul of that person to guide the person away from the world, away from iniquity, away from what can destroy. 
Later when they can handle certain truths because they have come of age. There are truths that some people cannot handle. That's why some people became born again and they were ushered into certain kind of things without certain foundations because the first thing is repentance from dead works. Get it? So we teach you to depart from certain kinds of things. And then when you are now grounded, now you now know that you don't have to meddle with these things. Then we bring you the light of other things. The Spirit of the Lord will bring you the light of other things. So that the enemy will not take advantage of what you have learned as the basics to now maybe imprison you. So God brings you other light, which we will talk about those things probably later. So, don't worry, the Lord is taking you there. Engaging the word of God. How do we engage God's word? Everything we teach here might not be exhaustive. Whatever we teach, it might not so be exhaustive. What I mean by exhaustive is, I can't teach everything about this. You know, it doesn't work like that. Maybe you might hear something else from another preacher to add up from another prophet or prophetess or another apostle somewhere else. All will add up because there's so much in the spirit. As we go deeper, I can also bring you further truth. The same me can bring you further truth on the same subject. And when I go deeper, when I go through certain encounters to discover that, okay, there can be more. There can be this and there can be that. Then we add up. So we keep on learning God. We keep on knowing Christ. That's why Paul said, grace and peace will be multiplied unto you according to the knowledge. He's talking about progressive comprehension of the Christ. So how do you engage God's spirit? Number one, you must believe and accept the scriptures as God's inspired writings. That is the point. You must believe and accept the scriptures as God's inspired writing. As God's inspired writings. How you're going to engage the word successfully is that you must believe and accept the scriptures as God's inspired writings. Until you come to that conclusion, first of all, you cannot rightly engage the word of God to your advantage. Now, I emphasize to us that the word is in twofold. Not ever we talk about God's word. There are two perspectives or there are two dimensions to the word of God. The first is the written word or the revealed word. What to call the logos. Something that has already been uttered, spoken. Some call it the spoken word. The written word. This one is the word of God put in a book so that you know you can read. And it came through men. And we already established that men are potters of inspirations. In other words, men can come under different inspirations of different spirits at any time. So he said that the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of a man is now the candle. It means that God can alight. God can put light on that spirit to now bring illumination to mankind, to humanity. So man is like a candle that can light. So through certain operations of God, of the spirit, there can be other spirit too when necessary. That's why people can also teach demonic things. Because they too can also be candles. Don't think Satan is darkness. Darkness is it's a description. It doesn't mean it is darkness, like as in black. It's letting you know they are oppression as compared to but it doesn't mean that Satan can appear with light, shining light, like you also be shining. So they can also bring illumination. That's why we have illuminati. Illuminati is from the word illumination. They believe that they have a knowledge that can illuminate people into certain oppressions. And they see you that you are walking in darkness. They have their light. So God can alight upon people. And then through the people that he alight upon as candles, he can now light them to bring illumination to the rest of humanity. Because we can be wallowing in darkness. Even though you can be born again, you can still walk in darkness. Obviously, that whoever says he's born again and hated his brother is already in darkness. 
There are things he mentioned that when you do, even though you are born again, you are walking in darkness. You can be born again. You are not in darkness, but you can walk in darkness. At a point. At a time. But ignorance can cause us to walk in darkness. And say that you can now alight upon certain people because their spirit is a candle. And then bring illumination unto people. So we are saying that the scripture came through such inspiration. Men became candles to receive inspiration from the spirit of Christ to now bring light. So he said that thy word is a lamp and is a light to my feet, to my path. The word of the Lord has now become a lamp and a light. How did the word come? Inspiration. Inspiration. Inspiration is a proven system for conveying the thought of spirit. One of the ways that the thoughts, the ideas, one of the ways that the civilizations of spirit can be introduced into the earth realm is by inspiration. And it might come to man as thoughts. It might come to them as ideas. But what they are operating under at that point is not just they thinking. It's not just reasoning. They have come under what we call inspiration. It means that an activation of certain kinds of light by spirit. He enlightens upon that man and that man thinks in a particular way. Looks at things in a particular way. Begin to receive ideas. Let's look at Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 17. Inspiration. Inspired. Inspired does not mean the man became possessed. No. We are not talking about someone who has lost his mind or who is not aware of his environment. You can be aware of your environment and you are inspired. You can be aware of your environment and yet you are being inspired. I can show you a particular scripture. Let's read the first scripture first. It says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. This is where I want you to know. It says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. What is saying that what we have received as scriptures, it came by inspiration. And I'm trying to let you understand that word, inspiration. The Bible says that the spirit of man are the candles of God. Which means that God alight upon men. He lights them in certain seasons to be able to communicate his thoughts. So a man can be communicating under an atmosphere called inspiration. Under that atmosphere, what he's speaking, he has ceased to be what he's thinking. It is an opening from the realm of heaven, intruding into that man and coming out as the thought of God. So at that moment, at that point that that man comes under inspiration, he's no more speaking as a man. He's speaking as God. Or he's speaking by the energy of the spirit that is inspiring him. One of the Pharisees, he made a statement that it is good that one dies for all. And then the Bible was now giving us a cue that when he said that thing, he said it by the Holy Ghost. He was a Pharisee. He wasn't part of those who were even filled with the Holy Ghost. And when they were deliberating on the matter, then a thought came to him. John 11, 15. Okay, let's look at that. He said, no, consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. Next verse. And this speak he not of himself. You see that? So they were saying something. If you go back, they were contemplating. They said, that, let's kill the guy. When they were thinking of killing Jesus, they are not killed him yet. And then they said that they are now plotting. And under the plot, this guy now said, they wish we kill him. Because they thought that what he's doing, if they don't stop him, the pirate, Italians, Roman kingdom, they will come in and take their kingdom. They will maybe stop their operations and all that. So they just thought that if we kill him, we will secure ourselves. Because what he's doing can let the international body. It's like maybe in Anarcho for doing something and then we believe that if we take him out, US or the other powerful, they will not come and take over the nation. So they now said, 
it is good that one man dies for all, so that the whole nation will not perish. And I said that, and this he spake not of himself, but being an high priest that he, he prophesied that Jesus should die for the nation. So this guy was not a man of the Holy Ghost necessarily. But at the point that this guy was making this statement, he didn't even know what was going on. It's just like when Peter now spoke and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus looked at him and said that this one he spoke, it is not by the agency of the flesh, but the spirit of my Father has alighted upon you to bring a perspective from the realm of God to mankind, to lighten them. So by inspiration, Peter spoke. And what he spoke was the exact mind of God. By inspiration. And the Bible is letting you know that the scriptures, what we read, even though it could be coming from men, but the men at the point of their writing, they were under an atmosphere of inspiration. In other words, they are taught at that moment was being regulated by heaven. It's the same way that in the demonic, people can bring out certain kinds of writings under the inspiration of demons. And when you begin to read those writings, you can travel by those ways. You can travel into their realm. You can have certain kinds of visitations that can now move you from mortality into immortality. Move you from the realm of this physical earth into the spirit to begin to engage with certain spirits to bring certain possibilities to pass. It is the same thing that he's saying. That all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So he's saying, don't look at men. Don't think in the flesh like people think. Because they don't have any understanding according to what the Bible says. The Bible is letting you know that one man who is not part of the apostles he spoke, what he spoke was prophetic. If God could alight upon a donkey and the donkey could speak, what are you talking about? Men already have vocal cords for speaking. A donkey didn't even have a vocal cords, but there was an atmosphere that the donkey came under and the donkey said, what are you doing? And that inspiration was from God. The donkey didn't do anything. The donkey was not a righteous man. The donkey has not been sanctified by the Holy Ghost. But the donkey received a thought. And that thought came from heaven. And the donkey said, hey. Say, I've been your horse. For how many years now? Have I disobeyed you before? Don't you know that this disobedience is not my disobedience? And he said, look for it. When he looked, the angel stood there with a sword. And said, if not for this donkey, I would have slaughtered you. Thou Bala. You would have gone. So that donkey came under an atmosphere that he now received vocal calls to utter words in the realm of men. It is the same way that men came under certain atmospheres so that what they were uttering were not the words of men. They were no more the thought of men. So men can come under certain atmosphere to now say that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus is saying that this one is beyond what his mind can think. If he's left with Peter, Peter would have said some foolish thing. He would have spoken according to the flesh. By that moment, the guy looked and he spoke and what he spoke was not natural. Somebody came to me and made a statement. When he made a statement, I said that this one is a demon that said it. I mean, normal human being, know. To her, she was thinking. And an utterance came out of her. When the utterance came out, I was in the spirit. And I heard the voice of a demon. But the person just spoke. To the person I spoke. According to my thoughts. And I said this one is a demon. Then she laughed. Then those who were there laughed. And I now went forward to try to engage. And the demon said. <laughs> he now laughs. <laughs> so you saw me. It was the Inspiration. So the utterance was not from the person's mind. That person cannot conceive it. There are thoughts that you might not be able to conceive except you are inspired. That's why I say no man can say Jesus Christ is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. In other words, that time that the person is making that confession, he is an inspiration. 
Because Peter spoke and said, you are the son of the living God. So for you to be able to say, Jesus Christ is Lord, the son of the living God, you come under an inspiration. It's beyond your mind. Because you are making an utterance that are of eternal value. You are making an utterance that is beyond time. That is not in the realm of man. To say Christ died for my sins is beyond the realm of man. A man can reason it and never be able to comprehend it. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine. It's profitable for doctrine. For reproof. For doctrine means for teaching. For establishing the coordinate of the Christian faith. And he said for reproof, it means for rebuke. So we got the right to rebuke. And you can't tell us that we are teaching law when we rebuke you. When you do what is wrong and rebuke you, don't tell us you are not supposed to be rebuked because we are under grace. You are a joker. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. It is needed. It is necessary. It is the tool, the standard for doctrine, for rebuke, for correction, for instruction. I can do something and I will think I was right. And then we go into the scripture and find out that I was wrong. What that thing does is that the scripture comes to correct me. And I have to accept the correction. Sometimes, even when we teach, you can make a statement. When you go, the spirit, and we already know that this one, so I don't want to show up next week, you come to now bring correction. The next time you show up, you must surely bring correction. And for instruction in righteousness. Instruction for living. This is not talking about righteousness by faith. He's talking about instruction for living the life of righteousness. For manifesting that righteousness. So I said, the first step for engaging the word of God is to believe and accept the scriptures as God's inspired writings. Don't look at men just communicating their thoughts. No. That's why at a place, when Paul wants to say something, you say, this one is not from the Lord. It's from me. This one is not from the Lord. It's because some of us were born into orthodox. So, you didn't come to meet people who understand the ways of the Spirit. You have not met prophetic people before. So, you think that how is God speaking? But there are people that can tell you the Lord is speaking to them. They know. The Lord speaks and reveals things. So, that same God can bring you a word. That word, when it is written, it is scripture. When it is uttered, it is scripture. So I said there are two perspectives to the word, to the scriptures. The first I said is the written word. The second one is the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. For these ones were inspirations before they became written. So anytime that you are also inspired by the Spirit, or any man is inspired by the Spirit to utter words or to write them down, you are still looking at something that is qualified to be called scripture. If it came by the Spirit. If you are not fully convinced, you cannot engage it. Because even though David made utterances, but if you release those utterances in the spirit and in the spirit of that word, there is the spirit of the word. So when you make the utterances in the spirit and then in the spirit of the word, that's why I said that I believe and therefore have I spoken. So we also believe and therefore speak. The spirit of that utterance is belief. Is faith. So he's saying that because they believed and they spoke, we also we come in the spirit of that utterance. And then by faith we also utter, we speak. It means that if I come not in the spirit of the word to make those utterances in the spirit, if I don't come by faith, I can make the utterance and the utterance will be void. It will be fruitless. It's not enough to say it is the word so it will come to pass. That word must be communicated in the spirit of the word. You that is speaking, trying to communicate that word. You must communicate that word in the spirit of the word. Let me try to see if I can break it down. That person who uttered the word, okay, like John said, I was in the spirit in the last day. There was a place that that person stood 
the person who uttered the word. The person whom that inspiration came to. There was a place that that person stood in the spirit to now bring those words. To now utter those words. For example, when Jesus commanded the demon, come out. There was a place that that person stood. Where he stood in the spirit is what we call the spirit of that word, of that particular statement. So for that same word to now become powerful in your own tongue, you have to also stand in that place where you stood in the spirit. It doesn't mean go and stand in Galilee. We are talking about a position that he took in the spirit, a posture. Do not utter that word. And I'm giving you an example. Say that it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. And then Paul also said, we believe and therefore we also speak. So the spirit of that word is that it's belief. He said, they believed and we also believed. So now we speak. They believed and they spoke. If they didn't believe, they wouldn't speak. So if you don't believe and you speak, you are not speaking by the spirit of that word. It will not come to pass. So faith is the realm that they stood, the posture in the spirit to bring certain word to pass. So believe that the scripture is God's inspired writing. Then you can be confident enough to now declare it and trust that God will back it. Now you can have enough faith in it. Because if you don't believe that it is the word of God, you can't express enough faith. If I speak to you prophetically and you believe that it is God's word, there's a way that you conduct yourself. But if you don't believe that this word came from God, you will trivialize it and do otherwise. And then you have problems. So when you believe that the word is inspired by God, and this is exactly the word that came by inspiration. You are not saying that the Bible was thrown from heaven. Let's go to the next thing. So first, you must believe and accept the scripture as God's inspired word. That's the only way that faith can be born in you. Faith in the word. That's the only way that when you utter the word, you do it with assurance. When you read it, you know that this is inspired by God. Therefore, it doesn't have the power to fail. It doesn't have the power to fail. The occult and the witchcraft, they have books. They know that it doesn't fail. If you can add two and two together, I know because I was introduced to this one when I was a teenager. You know, I thought we used to try to go for forgets and these things. Sometimes what they do, they just write something with chalk. There's some, maybe that they used to write it. It's like a chalk, but it's not a chalk. It's a power. They did write it on, they have a slate of their own. When they write it, then they wash it with water. And then they say, drink it. If you drink, what they wrote is what you have drank. And the manifestation of it is what you receive. They have books that were inspired by those spirits, those demons. Some demons, they come and say, that write this thing that we are teaching you. And under those inspirations, they wrote it. And when they now engage those things, they have absolute confidence because they know the source. They know that even though men wrote them, but the men were governed by certain spirit, were colonized by certain spirit. And if they wrote it and we engage it, there's no way to fail. So you too must have that assurance that this word is not like it dropped from heaven, but men spoke under inspiration. So by the inspiration of God, that word has now become the word of God. Because any word, any spirit that inspires you, what you write becomes the word of that spirit. So when you are reading it, if you believe that spirit, you must believe in its inspiration. Because it has the potency to bring manifestation. So in another translation, I think Luke chapter 6 verse 36 or so, he says that no word from God shall be void of power. No word. When he says with God, all things are possible. Another translation says that no word from God shall be void of power. It means no word that was inspired by God shall be void of power. That's why it is written that thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Romans 10. And I've seen people that say, say Jesus is Lord. And just because they are trying to say that demon, I'll say, hey, hey. Do not allow him. I wasn't even praying. I didn't even know there was a demon. I just said, you are going to receive Jesus. And when the person was now going to receive Jesus, as they say, Jesus, 
I believe that you died for my sins. And you were buried. But on the third day, you were raised from the dead by the Spirit of God. Today, I take you. All of that's one, they allow them. But as my Lord, <coughs> as my Lord, <coughs> then the demon will now say, hey, I will not allow him. I will not allow him. I've seen it many times. Not once. Not twice. Why? This is just something that was written by Paul. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This is the pattern for leading people to Christ. How was it uttered? By the inspiration of God. If you think it's the message of Paul, why is it that when we attempt to engage it, sometimes demons manifest? Or when men engage it, they are able to be translated from darkness into light. The next verse says that, For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So when men engage it, they are now thrown into salvation. It means that even though Paul wrote it, but it was by the inspiration of God. God is giving you the pattern. And when people engage this, salvation comes. How did you become born again? By following this. Is it the word of a man? Certainly not. Was it written through a man? Yes. But under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. We've seen a lot of things before. Those times that we used to do prayer meetings and all that. That's like maybe 2012. It was 2012 that we began. And I began with Seth. Seth was like my friend. I think we grew from lectures. And I found out that he was also a cast for this. So that day I was alone. So when we coming, I was talking to him about prayer and all that. You know, so we became like friends now. When one is going, he wait for me, then we go for lectures. Then we come. So I told him that oh, I pray on the floor every night. So he so can join me. And when he joined me, then we were praying. There was an influence that he was under. So it was just me and him. So we were praying, and I stopped to begin to explain certain scripture. And I was talking about, I think he told me about the problem that he was facing. Which was like a personal problem. And then when I was now tackling the problem, I was, I was now quoting scriptures. Like he has given an authority over demons to cast them out. Those were the scriptures because I was going to deal with the spirit. And that time it wasn't like today that at least we have some insight about certain things now. Like the realm of the spirit. At that time it was from the place of just the word, what we have received from the word. There's a the prophetic realm. You can look at somebody and see a demon. And then the spirit of the Lord can tell you that maybe touch the waist, the demon will leave. It's, you are dealing with the prophetic. It's also potent. But then, without that, you can begin from the scripture. That is the realm of known. That is where you know. You begin from this. So I began from the scripture. I didn't have any knowledge about any demon. I didn't have even the blood of Jesus, those kind of things that we engage today, no. But I just brought, he gave us power and authority over demons. I began to now say those things. All of a sudden, then the demon that was inside him, tormented him. Started shouting. Aah! And the guy fell down, started rolling on the floor. I was just quoting Matthew, some other scriptures. Matthew, look. That means that word is not a man's word. A man's word cannot bring that manifestation. The demon was screaming. In fact, he fell down doing so many things. I didn't know what to do. What I kept doing was to just speak. I didn't touch him. I was not introduced to touching. The way, like, maybe we do today, you know. So I just stood there and I was quoting, and he was screaming. And many things, putting the hand like this on the floor. So when I kept on like that, and then I saw that. He became okay. And then that thing he was suffering left him. So there's that dimension of the word. And it's letting you know that the word also under the inspiration of the spirit, when you can stand, the most important thing is to be able to stand in the place where that man stood to utter that word. When that alignment comes to pass, that word will be potent to produce what it says it can produce. If you don't stand at that place, I'll show you. If you don't stand at that place, they will quote it. You also quote it. You quote it and quote it, but nothing will happen. 
You have not stood there yet. It wasn't like maybe you were just moving around and you went to quote the scripture. No. No. Once you stand in that position, no. Don't be afraid. Yes. And there are other demons. The coating will not affect them. There are demons. Prayer cannot even affect them. There's another thing you have to engage to touch them. The spirit that one you just touch, but they will just manifest. There are things that. <laughs> no. So there are different layers. Let's leave that one. Maybe it's for later. The next point how to engage the word. You can write it down. Comprehend the framework and the scope of the scriptures. Comprehending the framework and the scope of the scriptures. Now, this one has got to do with putting the scriptures in their right perspective. Not engaging scriptures out of their jurisdiction. Sometimes you do that. Sometimes, like maybe you have head of authority. Like you have authority. Maybe I'll talk about the next point. Then you get what I'm saying. I think the next point or the next two points. Where we'll be looking at linking truth, linking the word, linking scriptures. Or coordinating truth. There was a time I, I did a teaching on coordinating truth. So once you hear about authority, when you read the book of Luke, Luke throws further light on what is said in Matthew 10. Luke 9, verse 1. Matthew 10, verse 1. They are the same scripture, the same place, the same situation. But Luke now added something. Matthew says that he gave them authority over unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses. And then Luke now says when he called them, he gave them power and authority. Power and authority. So what he gave them was not only authority. There are many instances that authority can fail you. Not because it failed. But because like the other time last week or so, when we were reading, Moses said, go and call the people to come. Then they said, we will not come up. He's challenging your authority. He said, come up. Sometimes he said, demon, stand up. You'll be sitting there. Stand up. Haven't you seen it before? When I say stand up, at that time, what you need is power. Compelling power. Compelling ability. Because he has now refused to adhere to your authority. So what will you do? Will you just stand and say, hey, is it me you are talking to? That's when you disobey a teacher. He brings king. King is power. Right? Come is authority. But the student won't say come. He will be looking at you. Come. If you don't take it, you will be walk out. Ariane, yes. Often time, what she needs is power. What is it? Stop. She will not stop. Stop. She will be doing something else. Then when you carry king, then she will now align. That is power. So when we attempt to exalt authority without understanding that often time, the way that authority can be effective is power. And power is not automatic. Authority is automatic. But power is not automatic. Power, you engage certain things in God to now activate power. To now ensure that power is operating. Kratos, Iskus, activated power. Energio. Energio. Activated power. That's why I said unto him that is able to do. It means there are things that God can only do. Is that unto that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can think or can ask or think according to the power that worked in you? The power that worked, the word worked is the energy, it means active, activated. So, say according to the power that is activated in you, that means there are levels of activations of power, and mostly that authority. When you attempt to confront sickness and confront certain classes of demons, some of them, when you say, arise, they will be sitting down and looking at you. Now, what will you do now? I say, I will not rise. What will you do? Do you have what it takes to compare that demon? I do this thing, so I understand what I'm saying. If the only thing you have is the verses, you might not get what I'm saying. When you begin to deal with demons, one-on-one, that's when you see challenge. Like here, openly. Hi. 
I want to show you something. I say, stand up. I say, I'm not stand up. What will you do? Then you release fire. So Jesus gave them power and authority. Now, if you don't take care, you can now take authority out of its perspective. But power has to come in. But if you try to use the authority to include everything, there are things that authority will do. There are other things, it is power. That's why we needed the Holy Spirit to come. So he said that you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Even though he gave them authority in his name, he said that in my name. But they still needed the Holy Ghost. They needed power, the compelling force. Because when he says, I will not go, there's a force that in disobedience can now compare to bow. The two must go hand in hand. You might read a scripture and say that I have given unto you the spirit of self-control like I was saying on Friday. But another scripture is telling you that flee. There are certain things that is warning you that don't touch. If you want the word of God to work for you, every scripture must be in its right perspective. Every scripture must be within its jurisdiction. Not every scripture covers everything. But sometimes as Christians, the wrong thing we do is to attempt to use one scripture to cover everything. That's why there's a need to understand the jurisdiction of the blood. And then the jurisdiction of the name. The jurisdiction of the word, of the spirit. That's what makes certain men to stand out. There's an understanding that they have attained. Somebody else has not attained it. He's holding one weapon. And he thinks the one weapon can destroy every enemy. Have you not read the Jews? There was an army in the mountains. He said they had a chariot of iron. They couldn't defeat them. They fought everyone and then they went to meet this guy. These guys were iron men. And what they are holding is a machet and daggers. You hit iron man, he's standing there and say, what is this? Are you joking? Are you joking? Or have you begun the fight? Iron. So there's the word for everything. If you go to somewhere and you are now quoting scripture out of perspective and you are trying to use it to apply, it will not work. You think the word is not potent. The word is potent. It is your inability to understand the perspective of particular scriptures. That's what creates the problem. Your inability. For example, he said that resist the devil and he will flee from you. Another place, he said that put on the whole armor of God so that you will be able to stand in the evil day. He's letting you know that, okay, we say that you have authority, you have power and you can challenge darkness. But he's now telling you that there's the possibility of you being defeated if you have not put on the armor. So if you just come and say that Jesus finished everything and no matter what happens, there's authority, there's power. You don't have to do anything. You don't have understanding. There's the place for authority. There's the place for what Jesus has done. But there's also a place for the organic life. And he's telling you that put on the whole armor of God that you'll be able to stand. If you don't put it on, you cannot stand. You can cause that God is able to make me to stand. There's a scripture like that. That is able to keep us from falling. But there are another scripture that he says flee. So don't go and stand saying God is able to keep me from falling. He said flee. What are you doing here? Don't just say get out of this town. Get out. Get out of this country. Get out of this city. Go. Go to Egypt. Don't say the Lord is my protector and my defender. Even in the land of Israel, God is here. You are using that other scripture out of its jurisdiction. It will fail you and you think the word is not potent. It's not the word. It is your inability to put them in their perspective, in their jurisdiction. And the Lord was with Judah and he drove out the inhabitants of the mountain but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had chariot of iron. Are you not afraid now? But later when you read, it was their fault. When you now, it wasn't God's fault. They are the ones who stopped. They were like, kind of, like some of you now, you are now dealing with iron men. You are fighting this battle and it's like the demons are, they have iron. Don't stop. You will them down. 
all God needs is your faith. Your faith must be up. Okay. So he says that put on the whole armor of God. So that you'll be able to stand. So don't quote, no matter what God is able to keep us from falling. He says, put on the whole armor of God. You don't put it on. The one that you are saying is able to keep you from falling. He's saying that because he has already given you another instruction. If you bring it out of his jurisdiction. He's saying that because he already told you that free fornication. That I can never be. I am the head and not the tail. You are a joker. It's not about quoting. It's about keeping the way. Every way is important. That's the way we do and look at our life. You cannot explain. Because we hang on to one word. And then we leave ten ways. One verse. I am the head. The Bible says I am the head and not the tail. I was watching some movies of this. The lady that went to consult a prophetess for a baby. And then the spirit now came. Baby is mine. They said, they are the gift of God. What are you talking about? And the spirit now said, ah, you know, you this baby belongs to me. Have you forgotten that night? You want to say, stop pretending. Stop pretending that you don't know me. You have gone for, even she had a dream and then that's still in the movie. Jesus now came to him and said, you can't bring the baby that I didn't give you to me. So those children, there's something in them that is not original. There's something, there's a combination of some things. They are divine. It's not easy. Some of you like the challenge you are facing. I know what I'm saying. There are people that I know. This one is not original human being. There's a seed of serpent inside the person. There's a seed of some animal. It was a fabrication. A certain energy acted upon the spirit of the father. Bring about this one. The work is much more than the normal person who is possessed with a demon. This one, God has to invent something different to bring this person out. Because even though he's a human being, but he's not a human being. I know people like that. There's a lady that those days I know. The father is black, the mother is black. I mean, this is black, black, pure black. The lady is like half cast. If you look at the lady, this is like, if you look at the eyes, you know this is eyes, not from this head. Hey! I pan, I am white. I'm showing the way we are you must be. You can hear, you are afraid. <laughs> and you look at her skin and look at everything. When I was praying for her, then Marie people seeing so many things. They now ask me that, can't you see the father and the mother? The mother met a Lebanese man and had an encounter with that Lebanese man. Such a encounter. And that man was not an ordinary man. Do that encounter. Because the spirit big references. That time, I didn't know how to ask the who are you? It's the spirit himself. And we had no experience, so we don't know what to do. We are just talking. Taking those statements, giving me the history of the Lebanese man, and the seed was there to wait for marriage. To now, I don't know how it's possible. I don't know if there's a preservation in the spirit. So when the father now met, and then it formed the flesh, it, like there's a way they engineered it, and then that lady came out. If you see here, you know that this one hasn't fit here. If you see here, you know you are looking at a goddess. You're not looking at a human being. We tried everything that we could do at that time. We found out that this one is a special case. Yeah, they say she's one of us. She's not like you. She's one of us. And she will dream and you know, some strange, strange dreams. But the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So you need to comprehend the framework and the scope of the scriptures. Very important. Don't quote scriptures out of their boundaries. If you know you need to ask for forgiveness, do. It's a relationship with God. Don't go and somebody say you don't need to ask for forgiveness. Are you crazy? That you don't need to ask for forgiveness. What kind of teaching is that? It's a relationship between you and God. So if you find out that I hate God, 
I did something wrong to God. What do you do? He said, I'm sorry. I didn't know that this one that I was doing was wrong. Forgive me. It's just like me and you. God is not an inanimate person. He's a being. A personality like you and that has emotions. Can be hurt. Can be displeased. And it's a relationship that you're having with a person. So if you find out that, you say, don't do this and you did it. What do you tell him? You now say, nothing happened. The last time he said, I know, I did it, but don't worry. Jesus is not. He said, oh, I didn't know. Sorry. And he himself will now tell you something. That, don't worry. You don't look and say, I know you understand. There's a place for prayer. There's a place for living a consecrated life. Don't just be praying and the life you are living is not correct. And don't just be say, I separate myself with no prayer. There's a place for giving, for sowing seeds, for planting in the house of God. All of them must have their perspective. You can't use one to cover the other. It doesn't work. Your spirituality will not yield the result it's supposed to yield. Because when the angels come, there's no covenant. There's a challenge with covenant. People will say, what is covenant? Jesus has already come. And not one. Because there's a place for everything. There are things that people do. The guy did it and then the angel now came and said that, I pray and I am, I give it. I come up. For a memorial before God. So there's a place for different things. There's a place for speaking in tongues. You don't exhort it above measure. Okay, let's go to one of the scriptures then. We'll go to the next thing. Or maybe we have to pray and go. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And then we can also look at Romans chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And verse 6 or so. It says, And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be popped up for one against another. So you can think of men above that which is written. I've heard someone say, I am the most high God. He's talking faith. So now he say, I am the most high God. Maybe he's talking from a perspective. I might not really understand it. My example can be wrong, but he said, I am the most high God. The creator of the heavens and the earth. <laughs> not to think of man above that which is. So that's what is written. Let's forget about it. the example I gave another. But what is done to say is that there's the possibility that you can think certain things above what is written. In other words, you can take certain scriptures beyond their measure, beyond their scope. And it will now create problem. This was what it did to them was to pop them up. But they now said, I am of Apollos. I am of Paul. And Paul said, who is Apollos and who is Paul? They are messengers. They are men through whom the Lord communicated his word. And now you are seeing them as he said, did I die for you? And Paul now said, even the baptism, I've only baptized two households. He was now giving them the breakdown about that which is written. So you can take things about what is written. The perspective, the jurisdiction, you can go beyond it. And then it becomes a problem. Okay, let's look at Romans. Romans chapter 12. Let's take from verse 1. I believe it will help. Romans 12, let's take from verse 1. Okay, he said that, I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The same person who said that you are holy is now telling you that present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable. So what is he saying? Perspectives, jurisdictions, He's telling you the jurisdictions of certain scriptures. And if you don't put them in their right jurisdiction, there will, will be a... the next verse. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that it may prove what is good, what is that and acceptable 
perfect will of God. Somebody will say, I have the mind of Christ. The guy say, even if you have the mind of Christ, as a legal foundation, he is now telling you that, how can the mind of Christ be renewed? So he's telling that there's something that we say, and then there's something that you must still do. Because we have the mind of Christ. Now he's now saying, renew your mind. Hey. Is it not like a contradiction? Or it's not like a contradiction? So there's the absolute realm. There are things that are said. Their reality only comes when the Christian stands or takes a particular posture. Then those utterances can be valid. Because the same person who is to have them can come in the flesh. And you do understand that the demon's mind is operating. So it has got to do with posture. It has got to do with growth, maturity. So this is like the absolute you. But then there's a process of ascension, growing into that realm to manifest the mind of Christ. There's what we call the legal aspect of salvation. Like is it all things are yours. And then he now shows you the path to be able to assess those things that are yours. They are already yours, but they are not with you. You must still go for them. Like the land of promise was given to Israel. But Israel had to now move from Egypt, fight battles. And he's telling you that some of the people, they didn't drive them away. They couldn't. Chariot of iron. Iron men. They couldn't drive them away. And God said, the whole land I'm giving to you. But the guys couldn't drive them away. But is the land for them? Yes. Were they able to drive them away? No. Who occupied the land? Iron man. So sometimes God speaks in a generic sense. That if you can come this point to this point, it is yours. But your mind must be new. The next verse. This is where I want us to do that. Say, for I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. It means you can think of yourself more highly. And he's telling us that one is what you think about what is written. The first scripture we read. So a man can think beyond a perspective, beyond the jurisdiction of scriptures. Now someone say I'm the most like God. Okay. But to think soberly according to as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. To think soberly. To think soberly means to think according to scripture. According to what is written. Letting every scripture stay within its jurisdiction. He says that and it's ready to punish every disobedience when your own obedience is fulfilled. So God is not out there to fight for you when your obedience is not fulfilled. But we can preach a word to you to let you know that no matter what God is in charge, your own obedience, the family altar of poverty will never go down until you begin to obey the financial principles of the kingdom. You begin to obey the spiritual laws that the Lord has revealed through the word. You can obey it. You try many things until you follow instruction. We say don't stay in a room alone with opposite sex. And yet, you are staying together. Say, God, why, why did I fall? You fell because you obeyed the first instruction. You fall 200 times until you first obey the first instruction. The next thing to do, what is the next thing that you have to do? Engaging the word. It is that you must be filled with the Holy Spirit and His power. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit and His power. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's important. You are not filled with the Holy Ghost. You can't engage the word. You will engage it to your disadvantage, to your detriment, because it is the Holy Spirit that gives us the right perspective of scriptures. That's why Jesus can say, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And Paul is now going into Asia and the Holy Ghost forbade him perspective. He's put the scripture in its jurisdiction. Because you can hear go into other world and you think go everywhere. But when you are entering into a certain place, the Holy Ghost can say, not here yet. 
And say, ah, the word says go everywhere. You will die like a fowl. The spirit is now letting that all the world does not mean all the world. All the world is still under the authority of the will of the spirit. So all the world in its narrowed scope has got to do with where the spirit permits in anywhere in the world at any point in time. So all the world means that you forget the scripture that talks about the will of God. And say, God says, go into all the world. But there's also other scripture that deals with the will of God. So the Holy Ghost can now bring you perspective. He can now show you the right jurisdiction of the way because you are filled with the Holy Ghost. And when you are moving, you will now come and say, the will, the will of the Spirit. But when you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, you will not know the will of the Spirit. So you now carry, say, go into other world. Then you go and distribute. There's a time that the Holy Ghost told Jesus that run for your life. Run for your life. So when they come, Jesus will pass through them. And you, you will escape. Let, let's read that word. And then there was a guy that, a man of God, Am Roberts came with guns. And he heard in the Hosea. When they came, the Hosea said, three things will happen. All of you will die right now. Or you repent. And then another thing. He said, one of the three will surely happen. And the people now went down and they, they begged him and they apologized. These two robbers came and they said, hey, hey, come now. Then he also stood up. He didn't know the way. He stood up and said, three things will happen right now. And they fired him. As he was mentioning the three things, they just said, po, po, po. Three bullets happened. Three things have happened. There's a time that God can say, follow them. Just do what it is. I'll bring you deliverance. As at the time that I have purpose. They came, they took Daniel. They arrested him. They took him. When they were taken to the lions, then God was watching. Your deliverance is in the dead. If you rebel and you attempt to fight them, you are on your own. They will slaughter you. Lions will not kill you. They themselves will kill you. So the Spirit of God says, don't worry, follow them. Then it's not fast rules. There are no fast rules. It is by walking with the Spirit. The Spirit can tell you, don't go here. The next three days, you say, go there. He knows. Okay. Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast on him. But Jesus hid himself. Jesus did what? Then say, You can't hit me. You can't hit me. So I like, when he's coming, just run. You know, that's where to move you. So you don't go and please. He hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed back. He hid himself. The moment they brought the stone, he just cornered himself and as they were now talking, talking, talking. God made them to be talking, talking, talking. So don't stand there and be watching them. He said, Ah, you, the, the other person, what has he done? No. Ah, he looked around. I've been there before. I want to pray on a shrine. And the native doctors and they came there and said, Where is he? We were now making noise when they, I was standing at the far end and they were coming. The place is big. It's like those whole compound plus that side. And there's many like different snakes, lions, like some of the medicine. You know, everyone in the what is there? Some is a, it's a snake, big snake with top like a human. They have drawn it there on that. Like this one is for this one. Then this one, you see a lion is there. You see different kinds of creatures. What do come? Some is a male. It's like a fish and a male top. So they were coming from there. Now, where is he? Where is he? When I heard that they were doing that thing, I had someone say, you slap him. Cry. So this people will not come and meet me here. So I was just going back once more. Kabo, Shelede, Sambrada. I didn't stop, but I, I was still out. As it tongues. I was speaking as it tongues. Matata, shete, kebata. No, no, God has already given me time. 
The moment I entered the corner, one guy came there and said, where is he? I'll slap him. Where is he? When I heard that guy's voice, the speed that I... So if I was not moving by the... Sl- that guy, when he came, he provoked everybody. It was when I left that, they now became normal. Then they came to my grandmother and said, that we will beat him. And my grandmother said, I was hearing everything because I was in the territory. And it was night. It was around 2 a.m. So when you speak, everybody can hear. But Jesus went away. So you must be filled with the Spirit because it's the Spirit that will give you the right perspective of Scriptures. If not, you wouldn't. You go by doctrine. He said that the letter killed it. The Spirit given life. That's what a lot of this our churches, I don't want to like. They are moving with the letter. The letter killed it. So when they now see the spirit, they don't even know the spirit. They know the letters. But when they see the spirit, they say it's a demon. So they will tell you that miracles have ended. There's nothing like tongue speaking. There's nothing like this. They say the only miracles is salvation. The letter. And then you must be full of power. You must engage power. The word does not just manifest. Certain dimensions of the word of God do not just manifest. Just because you are making utterances. No. It takes power. It takes power. When you look at Luke. I think Luke 5.17. Jesus was preaching on a certain day. And he said that and the power of God was present. To heal. So healing is an operation of power. That's why we cannot teach. You can give somebody two scriptures and all that. And then other people like that have done that too. Maybe I give them scriptures. They meditate. And then sicknesses depart from them. But it doesn't work in every case. Other cases I've given them every scripture. And they still remain as ancient of dates. As old as you are. So we find out that. Okay there are different channels that healing can be wrought. It's not just by saying, okay, I give you the word that meditates. Try it with the careful and you know that the careful will still be careful. There are certain infirmities or sickness that can be within that range. That's why Jesus, when you read this one, and it came to pass on the day, as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and the doctors of the law sitting by, which came out of every town of Galilee and Judah and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. This one is saying that the healing is by power. And in Matthew chapter 8, verse 7, it says that he cast out many devils by his word. So there's a time the word that is spoken, and then the word deal with demons. And there's a time that it is the operation of power. That one has got to do how much of your life you have submitted to the Holy Ghost in prayer and in fasting and in consecration. If you have not done that thing, you go and stand there, you will say many things, nothing will come to pass. You have some results, but not all results. Few results. Once in a while result. But if you want to have consistency, every one of these must be engaged. So there's prayer, there's fasting, there's consecration. There's the understanding of the word. There are many things playing together. Because some people, when they come, they need paracetamol. Another person might not need paracetamol. You have to do surgery and cut that thing out. You give paracetamol, you can give all the drug. The thing is still growing. It might be cut off. If you are a doctor of paracetamol, and you describe and write the medicine for you, to know where you cannot attack every situation. So you might be full of power. But through prayer, fasting, you must be able to generate power. To confront certain classes of demons. You should be able to compare them. Rapa said he went into a certain meeting. And when he went there, the moment he mounted, people started running. They were running away. That one is power. It's fire. You see what they have not seen before. It's fire. There's a fire that you bring. You cannot generate that fire. By the processes that bring the fire, there will be a problem. So, you cannot engage the way. Because sometimes, and most often than not, 
the way that you bring the word to pass is that the power of the Lord must be present. Like Luke says, the power of God was present to him. Can you come with power? And it's more than saying, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. There's a power that deals with what you call ability. Ability means potential. Like every one of us, you have the ability to do something. Like as you are here, you have the ability to give birth. You have the ability. But are you pregnant? This one has the ability, but he did it. There has been observation of certain protocols. And now, it's not just an ability. It is active. It is in operation. It is power. So that's what we call ability. It means that it's like a potential that is there. You have the potential. And then we have what we call kratos. Kratos. We are not looking at not an ability, not a potential. But what is in operation. What is already available. For anything that hits it, something will happen. Like heater has the ability to heat water. But when you plug it in and it is red. Anything that you contact, something will happen. So there is that one that says that you shall receive the ability. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And then there are people who have gone through processes now. It's not just an ability. It's already activated. There's a power that can now be transferred. You can engage it. You can use it. And with that power, that comes when you are praying, fasting, and you are doing what you are supposed to do as instructed by the Spirit to now make that power available. People have gone through that process. And I said that by that power, you can bring the word of God to pass. You can engage the word in your life. You don't submit to God in that kind of life of prayer. Some of us, when we talk about prayer, we think fasting. It's like I'm going to fast for 21 days. I'm not feeling well as I'm standing here. But you still have to fast. The devil is a liar. I know maybe you will think he's bringing this one. So we will fast. The demon is a liar. I'm not saying you are not well fast though. You are different. I am different. I understand my situation. I don't understand your situation. You to understand your own situation. And do what is good for you. It is well advised that if you are not well, don't fast. That one, people like Benin and all this stuff, they've established it. If you want to fast and you are not well, see your doctor. It's not me who is saying it. I might not say that. But those who have experience, I don't understand it, but that's what he said. And me, I obey it. The only one coming out, you might think you are wiser than them. And later you die. When you die, when you go to heaven, then you know you are not wiser than them. They have gone through many things. When you do hear obey him, He's been many healed, but I'll show you the 95 video. Be shocked. They heal it. Stadium packed. But I understand my situation. So you must be filled with the Holy Ghost and His power. Let me add the two. Yes, as points. Add the next points. Scriptural linking or coordinating of truth. Write it. Where you learn how to coordinate truth. Every truth. Sometimes you have to add three things or five things to bring a particular outcome. You coordinate truth. So where he said, put on the whole armor of God. And he said, resist the devil. All, all of that, you add them together. So when you want to resist the devil, he has shown you that you must put on the whole armor of God so that you'll be able to stand. So if you want to resist the devil and you have not put on the whole armor of God, you cannot stand. He says that if you want to go against darkness, your own obedience must be fulfilled. If you are attempting to alter something darkness is doing, or you want to engage God against darkness, meanwhile your own obedience is not being fulfilled, the outcome will not be pleasant. You go to the battle and die. Israel, whenever Israel did something they were not supposed to, when they went to the battle, sometimes God didn't even tell them that you are not in alignment. The outcome of the war will let them come and say, hey, God... I'm going to say, go and check. What did I tell you? You didn't keep the word. That's why 2020 people are dead. 
That's why 30,000 people died. They read, victory belongs to the Lord, and they were jumping. Meanwhile, God said that I shall not watch me. And the guy has carried an abomination into his tent. The truth will not be coordinated. All right. And then you enforce it through litigation. Litigating and then enforcing the word. Sometimes certain demons you have to litigate against them. In other words, you have to bring a group of scriptures together. You stand there, they will challenge you, they will tell you that no. They will do with you something they call a quote I quote. The one who quote more will win. So say it is written that he shall give his angel charge over you. It is written. It is written. Satan will quote Jesus who quote. Satan will quote Jesus who quote. Satan will quote Jesus who quote. When you get to the point that Satan cannot quote again, he runs away. So sometimes you have to litigate. I've told you that sometimes you encounter certain spirit, they will ask you a question that if the Holy Ghost doesn't help you, or you have not read the word of God, you will not be able to answer. And if you can't answer that question, you are not crossing. So you will see something. And then you will be able to bring something from the spirit to negate it. That is called litigation. Like a lawyer. The mother, her son, brought her to me. What will you say now? The being is saying, the mother brought her to me. And the mother said, I can have her. What will you also bring from the word of God to challenge it? You litigate and then you enforce it. So you must know a range of scriptures that deal with a particular issue. But that the only way that the scriptures will work is when you do that. The only way that certain classes of those will lead may demon of last. Demon of last it might not even manifest or anything. That demons are leave people, we don't do anything, they just leave. Then we have covenant spirit. Those ones litigation. But they will tell you that the land is mine. I bought it. How dare you come here? Remember we were praying for that guy. How dare you come into my territory? How dare you? How dare you? He was asking me, how dare you come into my territory? Dare you? He belongs to me. He belongs to me. He was making some statement. Leave me now. Shall say, leave me now. How dare you? How dare you come into my territory? He knows he has a territory. What do you also know? And he said, You have crossed borders. This one you have come here is my territory. And he said, He is mine. He is mine. You must litigate. That one is not just quoting one verse. You know, I was saying Jesus died, the blood, the guy was saying, you know, he, he, he is so mine. You can't save him. And I was saying, I cannot save him, but Jesus has saved him. He said, Sir, I will not go. It wasn't easy. And the guy is strong too. It wasn't a joke. It was a serious thing. This kind of spirit, you must litigate. Family authors, you must litigate. When they go, they will show up with another argument. Second case, third case, they will file again, court of appeal. Borderland, how can you come and just say this is yours? And you bring all of those proofs gradually. As you litigate with those proofs, you find out that their defenses are being weakened by the scriptures. But that one is litigation. That one is not just one quote. They don't just pray by fire. Demon of lust doesn't have foundation. Just go. He leaves. Begin to talk to the Lord now. Shut up, Alas. Leave alone. Shebren tatas. Patus. Kebaladash. Kebololo. Just based on the scriptures. Speak in tongues. If you can speak in tongues, just do that. And it's going to let the word settle in your spirit. God is going to take you beyond maybe what I've communicated. He's going to take you beyond what I've communicated. I've communicated from the debt that I received. You can also receive a debt. You can receive a debt. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Shabalates. 
Lift your voice. We are going to take one or two prayer topics. Then we close. Lift your voice. Shika patas. Palups kabayatas. Jetetes. Shut up, lift your voice. Hey, Kabala Shata Jikata Tata Kapates Taka Bum Shata Rantiki Palada Kabala Sheledeles Jata Makatu Belu Setetes Rata Jita Paneko Palada Rantu Skapata you are generating power police kapatash On the move of God. See, there's always what God wants to do in season. First of all, the move of God begins with you. So we are praying that every attack on the move of God in your life, through this ministry, on this land, let that attack be negated. We are asking the Lord to release special angels, to release His Spirit to empower us, to empower people on this land. To empower this ministry to carry on that which is the move of God. Every attack against the revival, let it be negated now in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice. Jata Kappa. Rantos Command now. Command every attack. Whatever the enemy has orchestrated. To stop the move of the spirit in your life. To stop the move of the spirit in this ministry. To stop the move of God upon the land of Cape Coast, upon the land of UCC, let that engineer, that invention be negated. Let it be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let it be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Shibalatas. Baluk Zetetes. Tango Rakapatash. Come on now, come on. Every orchestration by darkness. Every orchestration by darkness. Let it be negated. Let it be negated. 
Let it be negated. Malazata. Lift your voice. Manipulation from hell. Manipulation from darkness. Against the move of God. Against the revival. Against the move of God's glory upon the land. Upon the ministry. Upon your life. We command in the name of Jesus. Command in the name of Jesus. Every attack to quench fires. To stop the fire of revival from spreading. To stop fire of prayer from spreading. In the name of Jesus. Let that attack be negated. Let that plot be negated. Father, by your Holy Ghost, let special angels be released. Akuta pata to stand with the army in this season. Makata kapata hey, to wage war against darkness, to bring to nothing the purposes of darkness. I the agenda of the enemy to quench the revival fire, to quench the fire of men, to quench the fires of men, to quench the fire of the ministry. Let the minister shakata who sematata. Arua, he do te ranta ta lebele sete te ranta kubala zata ake kopata ayata hey sumbele te lift your voice let every plot be destroyed let every agenda be negated let every plot be destroyed let every agenda shatter agendas akopa agenda of darkness, it holds to shut down the boat of fire, level open upon the church, Akata to quench the prayer fire, open upon the church, every attack, every scheme that darkness have devised to shut down the move of the spirit, and command in the name of Jesus. Let it be negated. We stop it. We cancel it. Cancel it. Cancel it. Cancel it. In the name of Jesus. Cancel it, my attackers. We negate the strategies. The revival will come. It will not stop. The move of the spirit will take over the land. It will not stop. It will not stop. It will not stop. It will not stop. The fire will never go down. The fire will not go down. The fire will not go down. Every power, every army of worms of darkness, demonic powers, release to quench fires. I eat it. We stop your presence. We stop you in the name of Jesus. We come in the authority of the blood. We come in the name of the Lord Jesus. We come in the power of his word. We lift up boundaries against you. We stop you now. The move of God will come. The move of power will come. The move of the spirit. It will not end. It will not stop. Kali setele mantash, umbrang teli talax, belus kapapash, sepeduza, palish, mantalash, mitolo sata, aiko balada setele, ela baba baba. Let the revival fire expand. Let the revival fire expand. Let the move of God expand. Let the move of prayer expand. Alekete pala, ito kapata, lebelus katata, ayeto to. Let the fire upon your life expand. Let the fire burn, nakata. Hey, malisete. Let prayer be restored. Elemontati, ilimantatash, obosi balata yakata. 
Let the prayer fire burn upon us, O Father. Pour down the fire. Pour down. Limele teka hata. Ele malu seleman taka palusa. Rente lege diga bosha kapata. Isale mata habose. Abala gada haya gama. Fall upon the church again. Revive our prayer. Fall upon the church again. Shibala, lift your voice, pray. Pray, pray. The enemy want to use. The enemy want to quench fires, but it will not take place. We stop it in the name of Jesus. Let the angels burn wall. Let the Holy Ghost lift up a standard. Ayata. Angelic resistance. Holy Ghost resistance. Angelic resistance. The resistance by the Holy Ghost. Resistance is by the holy angels of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ayapata. Ay kobelete. Hey. The will of the Lord shall be done. I love the sumbele de maya gada. Your prayer fire will not die. It shall not die. The revival will never stop. It is moving. It will sweep. By the Holy Ghost, the camp will shall be overturned. The light of the word of God, the light of the spirit, the move of the spirit shall overtake this land. It shall overtake this campus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let dress will come. Hey, even the vice chaplain, the deans, the registrars shall all begin to burn. Mayata, Allah Mayata, and let the student who can fire. Lembo bobo sata, iya la tata kapalo se belita, belindo digi di makata, shata tata shata, asembele tuta kapapapa, iza lega 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 lega. They shall run to the house of God. They shall become intercessors. The rabbis, the registrars shall become intercessors. Students will rise as intercessors. Selema kata kata. Letters will rise as intercessors. Come bolota. Lipata. They are resources who finance the kingdom. Itata pata kapa. Hey. Sonteke pahata. Akobe leti kapa. Let the wave of fire. The wave of revival. Ayata. Father, let angels be deployed. Let more angels be deployed. Let your spirit brood upon the land. Brood upon our lives. Brood by your Holy Ghost. Upon our ministry. Upon our this city, our cities. Upon the, our campus, this campus. Akapata, kapata. Itelemataka. As agents of revival, we are all being raised until we come to that point. The revival cannot come. Lift your hands and tell the Lord, our Father, let me be an agent of the revival. 
Your prayer lives will affect people around you. Your Christianity should affect the people around you. That is what we call revival. It's not preaching in church. It's more than praying in church. That your life becomes what affects people around you. That your prayer life is so much on fire. And everybody that is around you also begin to cut that fire. Ask the Lord now. Ask him. Hey. Father, let us be the agent of the revival. Let your fire rest upon us. Let your fire. Hey. Hey. Receive the fire for revival. Let your prayer fire never go down. When the enemy brings attack, let it wear off. Let it fail. Let it fail. In the name of Jesus. When they attempt to drown your spirituality, your prayer life, let it fail. Let it fail. Let it fail. Let it fail. In the name of Jesus. Let the fire burn upon you, upon us. Father, let the fire burn. Let the fire burn. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, God wants all of us to be agents of revival. All of us. That's the only way revival will come. Revival come because many men have caught fire. And many men have become the representation of God. Everywhere. So everywhere you pass, you can't dodge. And that thing now becomes what you call a bumper harvest. Because everyone has become like a man of God. Like a woman of God. So every one of the believers you make contact with, there's fire. Let that fire burn continually. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let prayer lives be stirred up. Let our passion for Jesus be stirred up. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let the operations of the Spirit be activated among us. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.